So the market today being led by sectors breathing a sigh of relief uh, from today's uh, news. The White House guide the guidelines to reopening this nation is giving restaurants, car dealers, all those sort of industries a lot more visibility. But it's just this one. Many are wondering if it's a trading pop or maybe the start of a long term rally. And by the way, what about the winners which have benefited during a crisis? Is it time for us to start closing those out? I'm going to bring in Kingsview Wealth Management CIO and Fox Business contributor Scott Martin, along with Shorebest CEO, Chief Investment Strategist Rob Luna. First, guys, uh, today's leaders, uh, these are industries and names that uh, have been suffering. They got a spark from this White House reopening guidelines. Uh, you know, we're talking restaurants, cruise lines, uh, airlines, hotels, casinos. Event planning, ride sharing, amusement companies, even even uh, fitness uh, health clubs. Scott, uh, you know, nice moves on the, all these today. Is the time to maybe start looking at them for long term investments? Man, uh, this is all stuff, Charles, that I love to do in my personal life. So I guess if if it's for me, yeah, I'd love for this stuff to keep opening or at least having the prospects of opening. You know, I want to modify, I guess, one of my favorite movie lines of all time when I think about what what's ahead of us. And it's like, if you open it, will they come? And to that, I mean, that's fine. We can open the country. We can open these restaurants. You can start encouraging people to take cruises again, get on airplanes. But will the consumer do it? And that's really what lays kind of in, heart, in my heart here is with respect to how the consumer is going to behave right. going forward just because something's open. Yes, confidence is coming back. Uh, last hour, Neil talked about it with Charlie and other guests about how, yes, the, the checks are going out and that's helping. But does that really bring back the confidence enough before we have a vaccine, before we have more therapeutics? And as that keeps going more in the future, I believe we get more confident. But I'm not so sure that May 1st is like the cutoff date, May right. 15th and June 1st. It's probably a few months still in the future. You know, Rob, to that point, uh, I, I think the, an extension of that question is uh, when you reopen them, how long will it take for them to come? You know, at one point today, Live Nation was up 12%. We know there are not going to be any concerts for a long time, but the market, though, isn't it the role of the market to sniff out these opportunities before they actually materialize? Yeah, no, that's exactly it, Charles. And I mean, and you, and you take a look at what's going on today. You know, let's remember just a few weeks ago, we were hitting these bottoms. We're up 27 percent from the bottom. Right. And so some of those names that led that were your apples, your big technology names, the, the names that really weren't hurt or weren't going to be hurt nearly as bad as some of your live nations during this What's happening today is the catch-up trade. So we're really at this interesting part of the market where if you're looking to get in here and get some further upside, it's probably not going to be by the names that have done well already. So really to step up and get in this market, you're going to have to take some risk here. And whether or not you believe it's going to happen right, right. away, I think the upside's only going to be led by those types of names. Okay, good. So we've got a difference of opinions there. And I want to pick up on what you're saying and talk about what I call the COVID-12, right? Yeah. Those names that really made out big time because we were shut in. For the most part, they're all down today, whether it's uh, Zoom, Citrix, Netflix, yeah. Roku, Peloton, Teladocs, EA, uh, 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 Activision, uh, you know, Amazon. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll stay, stay with you on this, Rob. You know, these are the names that, as we've been shut in, have dominated. Their stocks have gone through the roof. Through the roof. But I realize almost every time the market's up big, they're down. Yeah. Are, are, could they actually be overbought? Yeah, I, mean, I think they are, Charles. I mean, look at Amazon pushing 2,400. And these are all names I like and own personally, especially Amazon. That being said, uh, you know, like I'm talking about right now, these names have run up significantly. They didn't get hurt nearly as bad as the rest of the market. So I think if you're looking to allocate new capital to this market, it's not going to be in those names. Long term, are those names going to do well? Absolutely. But I think you need to enter those on pullbacks, not right here at the top. Right. Agreed. Scott, I'm going to uh, share the question with you, but I'll throw in gold since you were so mm -hmm. ahead of the curve on gold. It's made a big move, but it seems like it's spinning its wheels as well. Could this be one of those names uh, or an investment in this case that sort of gives some back if the rest of the market comes on? It could. I mean, that I love the fundamentals in gold, though, still, Charles, and you're right. I mean, we were on gold early and we're going to stay in gold because, <laughs> I mean, the, the, the printing presses are rolling and they're going to keep going throughout the summer. I mean, there's no doubt. So I think gold looks good here. And that's, by the way, my friends, with no inflation in the picture. Imagine we have to, if we actually get some of that in the next couple of years. So, yes, I think pursuant to what Rob was saying, which is exactly right, uh, gold is something to add to some of those more kind of uh, contrary names that have been pulling back uh, today, especially. But also also, look at financials, my friends. Like, financials are interesting, obviously, today, but they've been interesting in this recent rally. They really have.
haven't popped too much. So we own JP Morgan, we own City yeah. here. That's an area, man, where you could probably pick up a little bit of extra beta if the market keeps rallying without getting some pullback like we're seeing in Amazon and others. I, I really thought they were poised to do well this week. I think those gigantic loan loss provisions have held them back. So if Great, you're looking yeah. for value, maybe that's the place to go. Great opportunity. Hey, let, let me real quick. Uh, I've got a couple more big names I want to share with you guys. I'm going to go to Boeing, though, because that's the stock of the day. They brought back workers in the Puget Sound area. There's also a lot of scuttlebutt out there. They may cut a deal with Treasury real soon. How important is it that a name like Boeing be the kind of name that leads the entire market back, Scott? It's a, it's kind of more of a sentimental name, I think, at this point, Charles. I mean, I think the market wants to see leadership and probably wants to rely on the leadership that we've had in some of these bounces, of which Boeing has really not been a part of that. Boeing's rallies have been headline-driven, as you noted, with today's action. The funny thing to me about Boeing is the following. What kind of government deal do they cut? Uh, how much patience does the, does the government have for them? How much money does the government have for them? And then lastly, do they get that MAX 8 aircraft back in the sky when people do decide to fly again? Because for me, that is the real sentimental piece that could kick Boeing back right. up to 200. But this is a very headline driven stock only right now. Rob, uh, Boeing is going to say we're essential to, to the nation's uh, economy and its security. Uh, and President Trump has already made certain overtures and comments. I believe they're going to get a huge deal, probably better than the airlines did. Yeah, no, I agree. And everything Scott's saying makes a lot of sense. And I've spent time on the assembly line at Boeing plants in Washington. I mean, this is a fundamentally important company to the U.S. economy. That being said, as an investor, you know, let's remember what happened during the financial crisis with General Motors. General Motors stayed around. It got the output. But if you were an investor in there, you were wiped out. To Scott's point, we need to figure out if you're going to invest in Boeing, what that deal is going to look like when all is said and done. And at these levels, the risk reward, in my perspective, probably does not necessitate you owning that stock at these levels. Gentlemen, thank you both very much. Two of the best. Scott and Rob, always appreciate it. Have a great weekend, guys.